Well, we're here, uh, as I said, at Labour Party conference. We're now joined by the Shadow Health Secretary, uh, Jonathan Ashworth. Thank you very much for being with us uh, bright on. and early uh, this morning. Good morning. Now, you've got a new policy out, haven't you? What is it that you want to do? Well, I've been looking at the way in which prescriptions are delivered in England. And actually, prescriptions are now free in Scotland. They're free in Wales. They're free in Northern Ireland. So I think the people of England need the same deal. I think it will be fair to abolish prescription charges now in England as well. And that's what I'm announcing today at the Labour Party conference. So how much would this cost and how would you pay for it? Well, we've, we've allocated in our, in our plans around £745 million for it. And actually, when we get closer to the general election, we'll outline our full financial plans for the NHS. But, you know, politics is about choices, right? And this is a government that has chosen to give away billions in tax cuts to the very wealthiest of estates, with a big inheritance tax cuts, billions in tax cuts in corporation tax. And actually, yes, there is a cost to this, but when you've got a situation where a third of people, because they cannot afford their prescriptions, are not picking them up, a third of people with arthritis are not picking up their prescriptions because they can't afford it, when you've got a situation where people with, uh, with asthma a foregoing inhalers was a heartbreaking story of a young woman of 19 who died because she couldn't afford her inhaler for asthma. I think abolishing prescription charges is the fair thing to do. They do it in Scotland, they do it in Wales. I don't understand why the Tory government isn't giving the English people the same deal that the people of Wales and Scotland have Hang got. Hang on a minute, because, look, everyone would like free prescriptions, right? I would, yeah, I would yeah, like them. Everyone I would, would like, like them. them. But you can't tell me how you'd pay for it. Well, we are going to outline our tax and spending plans. So you plans. don't know yet? No, we, well, we are, working, we, are working, we are working on these, and John McDonnell will come forward, like he did at the last general election. We were the only party at the last general election who produced a detailed costings plan of each and every policy. But this is and this the next specific policy election, that you're announcing, and you haven't worked out how you're going to fund it. At the next general election, John McDonnell will outline an itemised spending plan for each and every policy in the same way he did at the last general election. But, by the way... There is a there is a immediate cost to this, but you've got a situation now where people are not taking their medicines and are getting iller, and that puts more pressure on the NHS. Okay. Or you're you've got a situation where people are not getting their medicine because they can't afford a prescription, and they're taking more time off work, affecting productivity in the economy and affecting the, our overall economic growth. So actually, this is a sensible intervention both for the NHS, for people's health, but for the economy as a whole. I want to ask you about another policy that Labour are pushing today, uh, about scrapping Ofsted, mm. the schools inspectors. I mean, I can imagine this is going to go down very well with teachers, but a lot of parents will be like, worried to hear this. Look, we want to drive up standards in schools. That is absolutely key. I'm a, I'm a parent of uh, two little girls who are lo at my local uh, uh, local primary school. State schools, by the way. I don't use private schools. I send my kids to state schools. I went to a comprehensive as a working class lad, and I'm proud to have gone to a comprehensive. And my priority, as indeed is Angela Rayner's and everybody at this Labour conference, is to drive up standards in every single state school. And yes, we don't think the Ofsted regime works anymore, but we're still going to have an inspector of schools wanna, to be driving up those I wanna standards. I want to ask, I've got a few questions about this policy, I will admit. Um, so, the idea that I've read in the papers this morning is that local councils will run regular health checks and then schools will only get more fuller inspectors by full-time trained professionals if something is flagged up. So, so there's still going to be an inspector then? But the concern schools is... Schools are still going to be inspected. If it's councils, is this going to be political? How do you no, standardise... going to be political. How do you standardise I mean, inspections it, across 147 I mean, I, council areas? I, 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 how do parents know well, that this is a standardised regime? I mean, standardised I mean, I mean local, authorities regime. Have, local authorities carry out all kinds of important functions which are not politicised. They're held to account by, democratically by councillors. But local authorities do all kinds of things. They, they're responsible for uh, children's, uh, children's social care. They're responsible for public health functions. Nobody thinks they are political. So how do you standardise it against as, uh, all of decisions, these different councils? Decisions as, well, there's going to be another inspectorate as well. There's going to be a... It, but it's not going to but be as heavy... It's not going to be up. as heavy-handed and as simplistic as what we've got with Ofsted. But I, don't, but I wouldn't want your viewers to, be, uh, to misunderstand. Our schools are still going to be inspected and we're still going to be driving up standards in schools. But it also starts, by the way, with properly funding our schools, not cutting our primary schools in the poorest areas like is happening in my Leicester South constituency where the richer areas are getting their best better financial settlement, giving schools fair funding, investing in staff so we've got the very best teachers 
educating our schools because putting children first is one of our priorities. You were talking a bit earlier about your comprehensive school background. Uh, we yes, know the conference is going to be debating. Very proud of it. Working class lad, grew up born in Salford, grew we, up in bits of Manchester. We know that conference is going to be debating the idea of abolishing private schools. Is yeah. that something you'd support? <laughs> well, it's, we'll see where the uh, debate gets to, and I think Angela Rayne is going to be talking about but, it. But what's your view? Uh, uh, well, I think the, uh, the tax loopholes that some of these private but, uh, schools uh, get what should, about be, the abolition? should, should, should be should be should be should be looked at. That's a very different issue, isn't it? What, well, no, what, no, do you because they're taking be they're taking advantage of tax loopholes, question, and that's what we need to the deal. Question is, should, so wait, the question is, should they be abolished? Well, you know, I've never liked uh, I've never liked primary school uh, private school. I look, I'm not primary schools. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a bit of a slip, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, was, they'll be all having a go at me on Twitter now. Um, no, private schools. I've never liked. Uh, 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 at private schools at all uh, and uh, uh, I think they do need to be reformed and I'm, I'm a big fan of Tony Crossland who was very very rude about the uh, the private school system should uh, they be abolished uh, uh, but we'll see whether well, we'll see what the conference decides but the priority has got to be standards in our state schools for the many for the majority of children and in this school in this country go to state schools okay. and it's driving up standards and giving them the very best quality of education now we've been talking about policy so far are you worried that these policy discussions are going to be overshadowed by more internal Labour Party rounds? I mean, we've seen the aborted attempt to get rid of Tom Watson, for example, dominating the coverage of conferences. Well, look, I mean, I, you know, whatever people think of Tom Watson uh, and he's, you know, he's got supporters and he's got people who are not so keen on him in the Labour Party. I mean, I thought getting rid of the office of deputy leader of the Labour Party was counterproductive, misguided. It, it's a position that we've had for 70 years, held by Nye Bevan, Michael Foote, Denny Seeley. And, you know, I, I think everybody knows I was a bit frustrated yesterday when my announcement about training 5,000 GPs, so we have 27 million extra GP appointments. That's what a Labour government's going to deliver. That's what I announced yesterday. So I was a bit frustrated, yes, it had been overshadowed. But look, that was yesterday. The NEC are not putting that forward, and today, tomorrow, and uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to be focusing on our policies for government. Um, I know that's what you want to do, but I am well, going to ask a couple doing. more questions about this, because some people will be looking at this and think, is it really credible that this was all just down to John Lansman and Jeremy Corbyn didn't know anything about it at all? Come on. But, but, he was either ignorant of what his closest allies were doing, or he knew about it. No, it was put forward by John Lansman, right? And I've known John for years. Your viewers probably haven't got a clue who John Lansman is, by the way, but I've known him for years, and I've been coming to this conference now since... Uh, since My first conference was in 1996. I've been coming to this conference for a long time, and I've known John Lansman and have, have had all kinds of conference discussions and so on Do with John Lansman. This is, this is John, John Lansman is a master of all the different manoeuvres at conference, so... But look... It's, it's off the table now. It's gone. It and we're credible? focusing on policy. Is it, is it credible that Jeremy Corbyn had no idea that this was going to happen? Well, John Lansman, John Lansman does what John Lansman wants to do, and he put it forward at the NEC, as far as I'm aware. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know is the honest answer. I've got no idea what discussions have gone. I'm not on the NEC anymore. But look, it's gone now. That is gone. You know, so why we don't need to obsess about that anymore? We need to focus on the policies, like more GPs, more GP appointments, as we have done. getting rid of as prescriptions. We have done. As we have done. Um, Andrew Fisher, yeah. one of Jeremy Corbyn's longest standing aides, the man who was responsible for the successful uh, yeah, election manifesto yeah. last Good time round, has staff. decided that he's going to stand down. Now, in the, Sunday in the Sunday Times, they report a memo that he sent uh, where he says uh, the leaders' team have a lack of professionalism, competence and human decency. He's sick of the blizzard of lies and excuses. Well, I mean, What's he, going on? I think he's put out a statement saying he's, you know, he's worked there for four years. It's, uh, it's hard work. Uh, uh, stressful. I, in a previous life, uh, used to work for a leader of the Labour Party in one of these backroom jobs. They are hard work. And he wants to move on uh, towards the end of the year to spend more time with his young family. It's highly well, in the memo, it says entirely reasonable. he will tell other staff well, politicians seen that he's memo. leaving due to family commitments. Well, I've not seen that memo, but I've been working hard with Andrew Fisher on our policies, like our extra GPs, like our extra GP appointments, and like our free prescriptions policy I'm well, announcing today. I, I, found, well, I didn't know Andrew Fisher two, uh, four years ago. Uh, I'd read all the stuff on the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, you know, the Twitter and all that. But in the four years that I've worked for, with him, I found him professional, diligent, and as I say, I've worked closely with him in the last few days in developing our, our policies to recruit more GPs and abolish prescription charges. Uh, now, keen to ask you about Brexit uh, while we've got you as well. Um, the Labour Party now supports a second referendum in all circumstances, mm. but it hasn't said uh, how it would campaign in that referendum. 
Would you campaign for Leave or Remain? Well, I'm a Remainer, and my constituency voted Remain, and many of my constituents want us to remain. But I actually think the policy we put forward is, has merit and logic, because we've got to understand that we, ref we as a Labour Party, speak out for those constituencies like mine, who are Labour voters and Remain voters, but we also speak out uh, or speak up for the constituencies like Ashfield, like Doncaster, like Barnsley, who voted Leave, but are also Labour voters. So we've got to unite the country, and I think that's an entirely respectable thing to do. But, but the key thing is this, right? You know, you've got uh, the Liberal leader saying that we should just sort of end, you know, end, end Brexit. I mean, the Liberal Party were the first ones calling for a referendum, by the way. You know, we're in this mess because they were pandering, to, calling for a referendum, you know, five or six years ago. But actually, the party now offering a referendum is the Labour Party. So if your viewers want a referendum, they should vote Labour in this upcoming election. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn has not really said how he would campaign, how he would vote. He, it, you get the sense he wants to try and remain as neutral as possible. Is that really credible I think it's on an credible. issue that is so polarising, that is the number one divisive issue? Under Boris Johnson, you know exactly where the Conservative Party stand. Under Lib Dems, you know exactly where they stand. Well, you don't know where Boris Johnson stands because he's all, it, the he lies all over the place. Is, there a, is there a chance no, no, that no, Labour look, right. slips through the cracks? Look, you know, you know part, let's, parts of the country want to leave. Parts of the country want to remain, right? What we are trying to do is bring people together and say to people, we will negotiate a Brexit deal, a one, a one which tries to safeguard jobs that doesn't have the huge medicine shortages which Boris Johnson's deal would inevitably entail, but is also saying to those constituents, like mine in Leicester, that if you don't support Brexit and you want to remain, that option will be on the ballot paper as well. As I say, I think that position has merit and logic and I'm entirely relaxed about it. So it's, a similar you... it's a similar position to which Harold Wilson adopted in the uh, in the mid 70s, and it worked for Harold Wilson. So I'm, you know, it's fine by me. Why, why aren't you doing better in the polls then? Well, you know, you know, new new governments coming in always have a bit of a bounce. But look, you know, we've got to work harder, haven't we? We've got to work harder, and that's why this conference is what we're actually focusing on issues which matter to people. It matters that if your child is ill and you're trying to get a GP appointment, you're there like ringing, pressing redial and redial and redial, and when they get an appointment, it's not for weeks. I mean, what good is that? And if Matt Hancock says, oh, don't worry, we're going to force them to give you GP appointments or find the GPs, that ain't going to work. Okay. We need more GPs. These are the issues we're talking about this week. We're out of time. Uh, thank you very much for being on the programme. Thank you.